Welcome back, everyone. Next up, we have Sokoman Minerals Corp. It trades on the OTCQB under the symbol SIC and F, and on the TSXV under the symbol SIC, and is a discovery oriented company with projects in Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada. The company's primary focus is its portfolio of gold projects. Flagship 100% owned Moosehead Crippleback Lake option to Trans Canada Gold Corp and East Alder option to Cantera Minerals Corporation along the central Newfoundland Gold Belt and the district scale Fleur de Lis project in northwestern Newfoundland, which is targeting Dalradian type orogenic gold mineralization similar to the Curranault and Kavanaugh deposits in Northern Ireland and Canoonish in Scotland. Please welcome its president and CEO, Tim Froud. Welcome, Tim. Well, thank you, Anna, for that. And sorry for all the tongue twisters in there, but uh, <laughs> it, seems to come, it seems to come <laughs> with the territory. But I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. And thank you for this opportunity to present uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, uh, enlighten a bunch of people as to what we're up to and uh, where I think uh, we're headed uh, in the not too distant future. Wonderful. Well, the floor is yours, Tim. Thank you, Anna. Well, we're... Uh, a Newfoundland-based and focused exploration company, uh, primarily a gold company. Uh, we're, we're kind of accidental tourists, if you will, to the lithium space. But uh, you know what? Uh, you know, I'll take it because uh, it seems like uh, we've been given a very, very uh, awesome opportunity to, uh, you know, evaluate a, a totally new lithium and cesium and other critical minerals district uh, in an area that really wasn't looked at before. And, and you know what? That's exploration. And, and that's the business we're in. So here we go. Okay, next slide. One second here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, just a forward-looking statement. Uh, I will be making some uh, statements that could be uh, considered as forward-looking. And um, yeah, my lawyer makes sure I put this into every presentation. So, uh, as Anna mentioned, uh, we're a discovery-focused company. Um, we're, I think, very good at what we do. Uh, I think the evidence, the body of work that we've presented over the past uh, four or five years in particular has demonstrated that we are uh, able gold explorers. And uh, more recently, of course, uh, uh, through some uh, diligent prospecting, uh, a, a new player and potentially a very significant player, we think, in the uh, in the critical mineral space. And uh, But first of all, let's just talk about the Moosehead Project. Um, for those of you not familiar with Newfoundland, and I hope you can see my cursor, but uh, Newfoundland is, is uh, in eastern North America and cross-cut by numerous very, very large crustal scale faults or, or, or structures that are critical. Uh, if you're in the gold business and you're looking for gold deposits uh, of any size, and in particular, if you're looking for large gold deposits, you need these large deep seated uh, structures to basically you know, uh, source a lot of deep gold bearing fluids and, and bring them up to the surface where we can, uh, where we can get at them. Uh, and Newfoundland is certainly well endowed with, uh, with multiple uh, large scale gold bearing. We know there's gold on them, uh, uh, structures that uh, our Moosehead project sits on. And I just want to point out a couple of other key, uh, key properties here as well. Uh, the Marathon Gold Project will be Atlantic Canada's largest gold deposit when it's built uh, probably in the next year or so. I know Marathon Gold have started construction there and are well on their way to um, a timely, I think, production decision in late 2024 uh, with at least 5 million ounces of gold defined and, uh, and potentially a lot more. That same structure trends down to the southwest to Matador Mining, an Australian-based company with a with a smaller gold deposit, but still somewhere north of a million ounces of gold so far. And um, yeah, we uh, you know we just happen to be on that same structure. Um, no surprise that we're seeing gold-bearing fluids at Moosehead. And as well, we do have a series of joint ventures with uh, a partner Benton Resources, another venture exchange listed company. And one of those is one I'll be spending a little more time on than the other two is the uh, is the Golden Hope project where we made our, our lithium discovery in uh, in late 2021. Next slide. 
I'd like to start with infrastructure because it's often a topic that generally doesn't get discussed in, in these sorts of presentations in any, in any amount of detail because it's really the last thing a lot of people consider when they're looking for, uh, for gold deposits. I mean, you can't put a gold deposit where you'd like to find one, but if you can find one next to a major highway with an hour's drive to your drilling labs and your assay labs uh, that's been logged off, well, this is the project for you. <laughs> Uh, this 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 project has just phenomenal infrastructure, and uh, you know we're really happy that you know with our field office here. I'm sitting in the field office now. It's 15 minutes drive to the project. Um, you can drive there in a car. Uh, you don't need specialized equipment. Um, there's a provincial power substation four kilometers west of the project. So you know everything that you need, I guess, in terms of building a mine is here already. Uh, we just need to put the deposit here, and that's our job. And that's what we've been doing for the past really four and a bit years uh, drilling. Uh, we're again uh, the geology and mineralization is similar. Uh, we're on the main structure basically. We're you know location, location, location for gold. And uh, you know if you're not on a major structure, you know you may. You, know, you may not be, you know, um, in terms of, you know, structurally tr controlled gold deposits, at least uh, in, in an area where, you know, you're going to find significant orogenic gold mineralization. Um, Anna mentioned that uh, our flagship project, which is the Moosehead, is uh, an orogenic deposit targeting Fosterville type gold deposits. And for those not familiar with Fosterville, Fosterville is a very, very high grade, uh, very prolific gold gold producer in Australia, originally owned by uh, Kirkham Lake Gold, which is now part of uh, uh, Agnico Eagle through a merger, I think last year. But again, uh, very, very high grade gold in, in veins, in, in sedimentary rocks that have been structurally you know, mixed up, uh, very similar in age actually to our deposits, even though they're in Australia, age is really a relative thing with, with, with rocks because we know there's a lot of rocks around the planet that are the same age that are not geographically close to one another, but still uh, the models do apply. And um, so we've been drilling there since about 2018. We've defined five new zones of gold mineralization, and I'll get into those. In fact, here's a picture of our discovery hole, which actually was our first hole, uh, and um, it was it was it was a bit of a surprise, to be honest, with your first hole to hit, uh, you know, such an interesting uh, and high grade. Uh, uh, um, intersection. And in fact, it was this intersection, once we press released it, that uh, we got introduced to Mr. Eric Sprott, a very big player in the gold business. And uh, and since that day, he's uh, he's been with us uh, uh, very firmly. He's our largest shareholder with uh, about 27% of our outstanding stock. And um, yeah, he's, he's still a big fan and a supporter of us uh, with this, uh, which is very, very interesting project. So just a quick look at the infrastructure again. Here's the project outline here in white. Here's the Trans-Canada Highway here, the main, the main transportation route through the province, a paved secondary highway as well, cuts down to the western flank. And most of our work to date has been focused within this uh, yellow ellipse here, uh, we call the high grade area. And here's a picture of the barge that we've had working here uh, in the summers for the past two years, defining our zone, which actually trends basically as a splay off of this main Valentine Lake structure. So I won't go through all of these, but um, <clears throat> I mentioned Moosehead was a high-grade gold deposit, and uh, and certainly uh, it, we weren't just a one-hole wonder. Our first hole wasn't our best hole, nor our only hole that hit high grade. In fact, all the zones of mineralization that we've identified to date all have what we call jewelry box type intersections in them, and it just speaks of the uh, you know the you know the the tenor of gold here is 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 quite uh, is quite spectacular and unique. These types of systems uh, aren't found everywhere. And, um, you know, we're very happy that, uh, you know, we've got uh, what could be potentially a very significant uh, system developed that's still open in all directions. We've traced it for about 500 meters in a north-south uh, along trend uh, or along strike uh, uh, um, dimension uh, down to about uh, 400 meters vertically with a few holes and, and still open. Um, so what our, what our plans are, are to basically merge all of these zones into one continuous deposit, if we can possibly do that. If not, they'll have to be operated as separate sort of uh, targets. But uh, um, right now, it looks like these things could be trending towards and coming together as one semi-cohesive deposit. Uh, obviously, we've got a lot of work to do yet. 
We're currently 80,000 meters or so into a 100,000 meter program, which we expect will take us probably into late Q2, early Q3 this year before we finally finish that uh, 100,000 meters. And we're not gonna stop there. Uh, that's just a number that we put on the board. That's a round number for budgeting purposes. Uh, we will be drilling beyond that and, uh, uh, and into the foreseeable future as we still have a lot of work to do here to define uh, you know, our, our first resource, which is, which is still a ways off. And I'll get into that maybe with the Q&A a bit later on. One of our more recent intersections was a whole uh, 505 that we drilled just about Christmas time that cut uh, 21 meters of, of 9.75 grams per ton. So, you know, even at this stage, uh, you know, we're still finding these, these lovely high grade intersections and uh, we expect this won't be the last of them either. Um, one of the more significant holes we've drilled in the past uh, four or five months has uh, hole 463, which we released, I think just before Christmas last year. It cut uh, at about the deepest intersection point we've, we have to date, uh, 370 meters down dip from surface. It cut 39 meters of, um, I think 12 and a half grams, I think, uh, average grade with some uh, higher grade sub intervals in there, 90 grams over three and a half meters. A very, very, uh, you know, a high grade target. But what we didn't realize at the time was that it actually sits uh, in the foot wall to the main eastern trend. The eastern trend, as we know it, according to our modeling, uh, which is the red zone here, uh, would appear to intersect it. But actually, in three dimensions, this zone is actually below in the foot wall. So uh, we weren't expecting to see it, uh, to be honest. Uh, we were actually testing the main eastern trend and just continued the hole in this area here and intersect it. Uh, yeah, I mean, these things happen in exploration. And, uh, you know, this is why we're in the game, basically, to make these types of discoveries. So what this looks like in a plan view is this. Um, what these shapes here, the green and the yellow and the blue, and this brownish shape here, these are the main zones of gold mineralization that we've identified to date with their names. And this 463 zone, this blue lens here, if you want to call it that, actually sits below this uh, main eastern trend in the foot wall. And as opposed to being somewhat of a, of a easterly, you know, moderate to, to steep dip, uh, about 45 degrees or so, um, we now know, or certainly we think we know, that the 463 zone is actually a flat lying structure and that um, it probably doesn't come to surface. So we need to extend this thing to the north and to the south, and we've targeted a few holes. Some holes have been completed. We're still waiting for final results, and we expect to have some results out in the coming weeks. So. Uh, we're looking forward to that and getting that updated as well. And another intersection that we, we recently uh, announced as well, just after Christmas, was uh, hole 511. And we're calling it the 511 zone for no other reason than it was really uh, identified in hole 511. Cut about 21 meters of 1.12 grams. Now, yes, that is low grade. That's moderate. That's, that's very modest grades. But the setting and the style uh, of, the, of the host rocks and the overall appearance of the mineralization is very similar to everything that we see in the South Pond, the 75 and 463 zone, except that we have not yet intersected uh, any high grade mineralization. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's there, but the fact that everything else looks very similar to what we see surrounding high grade veins elsewhere on the property suggests that <clears throat> It's just a matter of time before we, uh, you know, before we get rewarded uh, with uh, with some intersections, uh, you know, more in tune with what we're used to seeing in some of our other zones. And this, by the way, is completely wide open to the southwest for several kilometers. There's no drilling to the southwest of this. So, uh, again, um, you know, we're focused right now on the 463 zone, but as time permits and just to allow assays to catch up to the drilling, uh, we will be alternating back and forth between, you know, testing this zone to the south and to depth, as well as obviously uh, pursuing this, uh, you know, very, very high grade target uh, in the 463 zone. And just to give you an idea of just how complex some of these systems can be, this is a portion of the 463 zone here. What you're looking at is uh, basically several zones of quartz veining separated by weak to modestly mineralized uh, gold mineralization that when, when graded out over the entire interval, uh, gave us the 39 meters of, of 12 grams. But within that, there's a higher grade section of 10 meters of uh, just under 42 grams. And uh, uh, again, um, you know, these uh, these systems are, are, are 
by their nature, you know, very nuggety. So uh, it doesn't mean that any of these other veins that we've intersected here, you know, a, a few meters off section wouldn't wouldn't carry good grades. But uh, you know, uh, it is what it is. So you take the good with the modest and uh, and just uh, <laughs> blend it out to uh, to what we have. So. Moving forward to uh, 2023, uh, about 18,000 meters left in the current uh, budgeted uh, program. Uh, and again, I mentioned we won't be stopping at uh, at that point. We still have a lot of work to do. All the zones are still open to depth and long strike. Uh, so we'll be testing basically the 463 zone, uh, you know, to the north and to uh, to to the south. Uh, obviously, um, the 511 zone, as I mentioned. Uh, and just testing random targets as we as we find time and uh, and um, and as we get these things uh, modeled up uh, on other areas of the property, and continuing on with our baseline environmental studies. So that's Moosehead in a nutshell. Uh, the next project I'm going to discuss is our is our new lithium discovery, our joint venture with uh, with Benton. It's down in southwestern Newfoundland. Moosehead would be up here in the northeast area. Um, uh, Golden Hope, which is the name of the project uh, uh, where the lithium discovery was made, sits close to the south coast. It's, uh, again, uh, another one of these situations where infrastructure is is important, uh, and I'll get into that uh, in a little in a little bit, but uh, you know, funny things happen when you send prospectors out in the field. Uh, sometimes they come back with things you weren't expecting. And, uh, and yeah, we were very pleasantly surprised uh, when our prospectors who thought they had happened up upon a, a quartz vein, which is, this is actually the discovery outcrop here. It looks like a white quartz vein. And indeed, uh, you know, you would have thought that until you actually sampled it and broke it open and found these strange looking crystals in here, these long bladed crystals, which are spodumene. Which is the main ore bearing mineral of uh, of lithium in these hard rock uh, types of deposits, and surface sampling uh, returned us up to 2.37% uh, lithium. So uh, we knew we had something significant, uh, and that story is still growing. Um, you know, the project is large. Uh, we staked it initially for gold, so we focused on a structure which is over 60 kilometers in length. Um, we've really only explored 10% of it uh, to date. We still don't know if the area that we've actually found is is the best area for, for lithium or are we as yet to find the, the highest grades? Uh, we don't know, but uh, we do have a camp in place. Uh, we raise uh, with our partner uh, several million dollars, uh, I think a couple million dollars each uh, at Christmas time to move this project forward. And um, yeah, we expect to be uh, opening camp. The drill's on site, the camp is on site. It's just in winter phase for now. We expect to be opening up camp mid to late April with drilling to commence uh, as soon as possible after that to follow up on, on some of the results that we've uh, recently reported from, uh, from holes completed uh, late last year. Um, you know, we're seeing, you know, significant thicknesses of, uh, of uh, pegmatite uh, greater than 1%. In fact, uh, our strongest hole to date cut 15.23 uh, meters of 1.04 uh, Li2O. And um, from what I understand, if you're you know 1% or in that ballpark, uh, you know, you've got something significant, uh, you know, uh, at your hands. But uh, before I get uh, too far ahead with the geology, let's just uh, remind you again of the infrastructure. Um, so again, this is uh, the road and power line network for this part of, uh, of Newfoundland. This is a paved highway. The project sits just 12 kilometers uh, west of the highway. It's 30 kilometers from a deep water ice-free port on the North Atlantic Ocean, the world's biggest highway. And there's a electrical power substation, which fed power to a, a nearby past producing gold mine that's just ready to be reactivated. And this is all hydroelectrically generated power as well. So check one off there for the ESG box. So uh, the Discovery Dyke was found in this area here called Kraken. And since then, our prospectors uh, have turned up dikes uh, up to about two kilometers away, uh, uh, several of which we've tested. Uh, not all of them are, are, uh, are um, well endowed with, with that, but that's to be expected. Again, we still don't know exactly where we are you know, fully in, in this system, and, and maybe the best is yet to come. And I'll get into that in just a second. But I do want to draw your attention to this area here called the Killick. 
And that's our most recent discovery and where we had three holes uh, reported uh, uh, just after Christmas. All three holes reported greater than 1% lithium over intervals from 9.5 to, uh, to, uh, to over 15 meters. And that remains open. So <clears throat> again, just a quick look at a section through it, a two hole section uh, with holes 25 and 26. Again, there's the intersections and open to depth, uh, some good continuity there, perhaps even a couple of dikes coming together here to get something even thicker. This is where we'll be focusing our drilling when we start up uh, next month. And again, a one hole section to the north of, uh, of those two, 30 meters to the north with a 15 meter intersection, completely wide open to depth and a long strike. So. We are very excited about this project. In fact, it is something that we're looking to move out of, uh, I guess, the current house uh, or houses that it's in, uh, basically create a new company and, and spin it out uh, partially to shareholders and as well partially to fund uh, on its own and, and, uh, and become a standalone company. Um, the discovery area, again, is here. This is where we've done most of our work. Uh, we did some test uh, uh, soil lines over it to see if we could see this thing uh, uh, geochemically, and fortunately we can. In fact, uh, soils, uh, B-horizon soils work very well with values up and including over 200 ppm lithium in, in the soil. So, so using that, we stepped out to the, near, to the, to the east and northeast. Uh, now we're now four kilometers away from the discovery area. And here we are still getting very robust values in soils. Now we haven't actually prospected these samples, uh, these areas yet, because these results came to us over the winter period uh, when we got the assays back. So again, another high priority area. So when we get the camp open next month, drilling down here, uh, we're gonna be prospecting and trenching on these soil anomalies here, which is four kilometers away. And <clears throat> As well, we also uh, found a, a dike or hopefully a series of dikes that are enriched in cesium. Now, cesium is another critical mineral that's probably not a lot of people are familiar with. Uh, uh, it is more of a niche market, but uh, it is quite valuable. And it is something that we will be pursuing in terms of drill testing, uh, uh, you know, possibly within a month or so after getting uh, underway at uh, at the Killick targets. Uh, but again, this is 12 kilometers. So suddenly now we've got a project that was two kilometers in terms of no mineralization, potentially six, and now up to 12. And we know very little about the intervening ground. So all this stuff needs to be worked and prospected. And uh, I would personally be very surprised if we don't find other dikes in, in this area. So just another quick look at the terrain and, and what this mineralization looks like. Uh, pellucite is the main uh, ore mineral for cesium. And uh, we see nice clots of that in, in this particular channel sample. In fact, the grades are quite, uh, quite outstanding, over 8% uh cesium oxide with half a percent lithium and tantalum and rubidium uh in in channel sampling over 1.2 meters again this has really only been lightly worked uh this was discovered just as the winter was starting uh so we need to go back and do a hell of a lot more work here but uh i'm, I'm quite excited by this target i think uh, i think it will have some uh, some roots here and uh um, yeah, it's just a matter of time, I think, before we, uh, you know, obviously have a significant uh, cesium deposit uh, under our belts as well. So, so moving forward uh, at Kraken or the lithium project, uh, three to five million dollar program to include a minimum of 5,000 meters of drilling. I'm not sure exactly how many holes that will get us, but I would suspect it will be somewhere in the 25 to 30, maybe 35 holes uh, if we're lucky. Uh, that'll tell us a lot more uh, about the potential for this project to host significant, uh, you know, uh, volumes of, of mineralized, uh, you know, rock with spodumene with lithium in it and cesium, hopefully. And just continue with the basic programs as well. Uh, it, it is a large area. It's 800 square kilometer property covering 60 kilometers of the of the favorable strike length of the structure that the dikes, uh, the mineralized dikes seem to be associated with. So um, we're very excited about this project and what it could mean for our shareholders. So while I still have a couple minutes, I'll just briefly touch on um, probably my other, my next favorite goal project, <laughs> uh, the Fleur de Lis, which is targeting, uh, as Anna pointed out at the start, uh, you know, Dalradian type uh, gold mineralization, very similar to gold deposits that uh, 
are known and are being developed in the UK. In fact, in Northern Ireland and Scotland. Uh, one deposit in particular, the Kernalt, uh, has over 6 million ounces of gold. And uh, these rocks are, are, are chemically and physically and, and geologically the same, <clears throat> the same belt um, that occur uh, uh, in Northern Ireland and Scotland uh, as, as we have here in, uh, in Northern Newfoundland. So uh, we're early stage on that. And in fact, uh, we probably could look at doing some trenching on some gold targets. Uh, we've got a 30 kilometer long uh, gold and soil um, uh, anomaly there that's uh, you know just waiting um, to be trenched. Uh, again, priorities. Uh, you know, obviously, Moosehead is our flagship, and and the Kraken Lithium project needs to be evaluated as quickly as possible, based on you know the current market being very robust for lithium. And as well, we want to you know get this thing up and moving as a separate company, uh, the lithium that is, uh, you know, to uh, to you know dividend out to our shareholders and uh, and hopefully uh, um, you know um, you know finance the thing and. Uh, and uh, and bring something very significant forward. I'm probably getting very close to time, but uh, um, I'll just skip ahead to our board management. Uh, again, uh, we're a small group, but a very dedicated group. Our board is very technically oriented. Uh, three of five directors are, are geologists, uh, hence our focus on exploration and discovery as opposed to development. Um, and of course, with strong support from our uh, from our other directors. And um, yeah, this is a look at our current share structure. Uh, currently, seven million cash in the bank. Uh, our largest shareholders are Exprod at 26%, and issued an outstanding just over 200 million shares. So our market cap uh, currently at about 55 or 60 million dollars Canadian. So um, there we have it. Hopefully, we have some time for questions. Great job, Tim. Yes, a very thorough presentation. We've got so many questions for you. Let's see how many we can get in. Okay. Eric Cash says, I'm wondering if you plan to position a drill directly above the 463 zone on eastern edge of North Pond and drill a vertical hole and several holes slightly off vertical to further test the 463. Well, that's actually something we considered, uh, although where it sits on the property, uh, and thank you for your question, by the way, it's an excellent question. Um, where it sits, we're kind of right on the edge of a pond, so you're you're kind of you're kind of in a spot where it's it's difficult uh, logistically to to position a drill. We're actually considering bringing the drill back again to uh, facilitate uh, you know a short program over that target area, but for now we're just trying to target it. Uh, now that we know it's actually perpendicular to the main eastern trend, we actually need to sort of target this from the other side of the pond from where the initial hole was drilled because it is at right angles and um, I don't know if you can see my hands or anything but uh, uh, if I've uh, <laughs> blocked myself out but anyway yeah it's like just a T intersection so we're, we're just trying to uh, figure out the best way to uh, to approach this uh, we did drill a couple of holes that we wedged off and uh, we're waiting for results uh, from that uh, we did intersect uh, you know what appears to be the structure uh, again you know uh, you can't always tell with uh, with gold you don't always see gold although we do see veining um, you can't always tell uh, unless you're fortunate enough to see some some coarse gold but at this point uh, but no we will certainly take that into consideration We've got a question and a suggestion from Kevin Slade. Kevin says it's been about eight weeks to get drill results out and we haven't seen updates to the shareholders. So can you do a couple of line updates every three to four weeks? Uh, we, we could, although, you know, there, there's not always enough information or we haven't either received final results. Uh, again, uh, one thing about these high grade systems is that any sample we get, uh, you know, we, we generally send the, you know, them in routine for, for a 30 gram fire assay, which you can get back in you know a couple of weeks uh, approximately. Uh, however, anything any assay that comes back greater than one gram per ton, uh, we always send in for metallics. And what happens then? They have to go back and they have to pulverize the entire sample and sieve it and screen it and produce two concentrates that they do an assay of the fine fraction. And the, so, you know, long story short, it, it just it just increases the time between getting results back uh, uh, and um, <clears throat> 
and when you can actually put the story out. And as well, wedging does kind of add a little bit of time to you know getting through the targets because uh, you're you're you know you're dealing with you're modifying a hole with you know steel pins and everything, and uh, it does tend to slow things down. So we apologize for that, but uh, you know hopefully. Um, you know, if we don't have to do much more wedging, we can get back on a more routine, if you will, uh, uh, update uh, uh, as far as assays are concerned. And, and I understand that. Mike Waterman asks, why are there only two drills on Moosehead? Well, right now it's uh, it's it's logistics. Basically, uh, we do hope to get the barge back in the water again, which would uh, obviously be end up be a third rig. Uh, and as well, we're still fine tuning some of the. Uh, we just had a geophysical survey done over the winter period, uh, a deep seated uh, IP survey to see down. Typically, IP doesn't see very deeply. You know, it depends on the on the spacing. But you know, if you're looking at 50 to 100 meters, is probably, you know, what most people would expect to see with uh, with normal IP. We did an alpha survey, which uh, which can see much deeper. So we're still modeling up a lot of, uh, you know, secondary and and, and tertiary targets. Uh, that, that will take a little time so uh um yeah and as well we're about to approach the spring break up time anyway so it really doesn't make any sense to mobilize rigs in only to have the roads you know go to a pot on us and suddenly you know we're sitting around with a drill sitting out there doing nothing for you know several weeks so uh uh that's why several reasons why there's just two rigs there for now last question due to time when do you foresee the need for another cash raise uh, well, uh, clearly we would definitely have to raise, you know, we're going to be drilling, you know, obviously, uh, you know, uh, continuously, uh, you know, short of, a, of the normal breaks and, of course, the spring break up at Moosehead, uh, you know, for probably the remainder of the year at Moosehead and the current budget, uh, uh, 100,000 meters, we're expecting to get there probably at the end of summer. And, of course, we're also going to be adding now the, uh, you know, the program at, uh, at Kraken, uh, although we did raise some flow through for that, um, I would I would say sometime late second quarter, early third quarter, we we'd be looking at uh, at, at doing a raise. Uh, now, having said that, um, you know we are expecting at some point to be some consolidation in this in this camp. There's a lot of companies out there with uh, you know a lot of you know uh, spoons in the pot sort of thing, and uh, uh, a lot with similar shareholder uh, shareholder ownership. So. Um, you know, uh, if if a, if a company came along and wanted to uh, uh, participate as a, either a funding partner or a, you know a strategic alliance and wanted to throw some money at us in that sense, uh, I wouldn't turn that down either. And these are, of course, unexpected uh, things. Uh, you know, in the normal due course of things, I would expect that our you know our normal plans would would still be to raise sometime maybe in the uh, late second, early early third quarter of this year. Well, Tim, thank you so much. We have tons of questions for you, but we are out of time. So we'll send these to you so you can answer on your own. But please come back again in the near future with some updates. Well, and thank you very, very kindly for this. And I, uh, yeah, please reach out, email me or call me if you have questions. Uh, I put my name and number on press releases for a reason. Great. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time. And we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Okay, everyone stay with us. We'll be right back.